Okay. Good morning, everybody. So, good morning, Merge. How's everybody doing today? I'm Pastor Derek, and I'm uh, excited to be again here with you guys again. So, have you ever really been in a really loud atmosphere? Um, my son might tell you that's our house all the time. So, for those of you who don't know, I was a firefighter for many, many years. And when people ask me what's one of the loudest experiences I've ever had, was being in a, it's being in a house fire, hands down. Um, the noises that you hear, the amount of things that are going on around you, the amount of things that you have to pay attention to, listen to, you know, when you're trying to talk to the, your partner or the person that's in front of you. So, like, we always had somebody that we had to follow into the fire. You never went alone. You, you always had to have somebody that was going in. So when I was a young firefighter, I always had an officer that I went into a fire with. And when you're trying to communicate in a fire in a smoked out building, you can't see them. You're lucky if you can hear them. Usually you can't. You have to feel for them, feel for the things, and you have to feel everything that's going on around you so that you know if th something's about to change for the worse or if something's getting better. We always tried to look for something better, whether it was putting out the fire or searching the building for somebody, but the communication and all the noise was crazy. So we're going to continue this series and talk about what's true for only young people in your phase of life. When it comes to being young, there's only one thing that is uniquely true. There's a lot of noise, right? So just think about your day-to-day -day life. Maybe you listen to your headphones with the volume all the way up, or you turn the volume up in the car and scream songs with your friends. Or for me and Tyler, it's me and him. You get in trouble for being too loud in class. That was me for sure in high school. You lose your voice after a football game, maybe, because you were screaming and cheering. See, you're not a loud person, but you constantly find yourself around people that are. So I'm not saying that young people are just loud, but I'm saying when you're young, noise just seems to find you. And it can be hard to figure out what to listen to and who to listen to. So, have you ever noticed that everyone seems to have opinions on what to do, or who to listen to, or what to watch? So, it's pretty crazy. Like, people are trying to tell you what you like and what you don't like, who you like and who you don't like, how to drive maybe, what your personal style is going to be what you'll do in your years after high school, what kind of jobs you might have or want to pursue, who to date, what kind of person to be, what to wear, maybe even the apps on your phone. There's always noise. Like, Tyler, what are you watching? Zach, what are you listening to? Zach? <laughs> Gabby, what do you have on? Who? Okay, great. Micah, what are you listening to? Ah. So, it, it's hard to make decisions about your life, right? Oh, who else? Hannah? What do you have on, Hannah? Ah, see? So, it's hard to make decisions and to listen with all that noise, right? So, you know, what to wear, what to do, who to talk to, where you're going to go after school, with all the noise going on around you. So with all the noise, all the opinions, all these voices speaking to you and into your life, how do you know who or what to listen to? So you guys have been talking about the relationship with Paul and Timothy. So Paul, who we've talked about through the series, is one of the most legendary leaders in the history of Christianity. He spent a lot of time investing in a younger guy named Tim Timothy. They traveled together. They worked together until eventually Timothy was out on his own at a church in a, call, in a city called Ephesus. So in order to pass along some of the wisdom about life and leadership, Paul wrote Timothy, Timothy a letter. Many people view the tone of Paul's letter like a father instructing a son. Uh, there's one part in this letter where they're focusing on specifically throughout this series. So don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Set the example 
for the believers in speech, in, contact, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. See, this piece of advice was so important, and it continues to be talked about and focused on today. Paul wanted Timothy to understand how high the stakes were, how great his potential was, and how he could lead well during his young years. However, this was only part of what Paul had to say to Timothy. In fact, we have copies of two letters that Paul wrote to Timothy, and they're full of advice, wisdom, and direction for life. It wasn't just spiritual stuff either. See, here's what I mean. So Paul gave Timothy advice about how to fix his stomach problems, what to do when people were fighting, what it takes to be a good leader, specific names of people to avoid because they're bad news, how to use the Bible, how to handle money, what kind of stuff to avoid, what kind of people to hang out with, how to impress older people, how to show respect to older and younger people. See, as you can see, Paul wasn't just Timothy's Bible teacher or like a chaperone in his life. Paul was Timothy's go-to guy for advice. Even more than that, Paul was someone who was older, who shared wisdom, and Timothy thought that that would make his life better. In fact, the kind of wisdom in, in these letters, in First and Second Timothy, are full of it. It's worth to go back and read them for yourself. Paul didn't teach Timothy lessons just meant for his future once he was, once he was no longer young. Paul helped Timothy figure out what to do in all the circumstances in his life as a young person, and as he got older. In other words, when Timothy wondered, how do I know what, how do I, how do I know what I don't know, right? His answer was, ask Paul. And then here's the reason we're talking about this today. It's a little thing that makes a big difference, so don't miss it. It was Timothy's choice. Timothy understood that we all needed the wisdom of someone older. This is true for you in high school, and this is even true for me as an adult. The thing is, you can have a unique opportunity to take advantage of right, right now. When you're in high school, one thing you can do will change the whole high school experience, is you could pick a mentor. They have to make wise decisions. They have to care enough about you and tell the truth. So, when I was a firefighter, young guy, I joined the fire service when I was 16 years old. Uh, my dad was a firefighter before me. As a matter of fact, he was chief of the department that I ended up joining. And they always hook you up with a senior firefighter. So a senior firefighter is just a guy who's been around for a while, shows you the ropes, and tells you what to do. So from the time I was a little boy, my dad was chief when I was about 12 years old. I always wanted to be in the firehouse, and I couldn't wait to get there. And when I finally got there at 16 years old, when I first joined the volunteer fire service, uh, I, was given a, I was given a lieutenant, and this guy was, became my mentor. So I listened, and he showed me the ways. He showed me what to do, what not to do, how to, look at the, how to look at the aspects of firefighting. So he was a huge impact on me. Like, I still think about this guy. I'm 45 now. I still think about this guy all the time, because he was literally the first influence I had in something that was so dear to me. So when the noise is turned up and everyone seems to have an opinion, one of the best things you can do for yourself is to decide in advance who you're going to listen to. Look, I know this isn't necessarily a common way to live in high school. It's not like everyone in your school is constantly talking about finding great mentors. But here's why it's important. Wisdom or knowing what to do when you face life circumstances comes from experience. So when you're in high school, you can choose to learn from people that have 15 years of wisdom, 30 years, 40 years, 60 years. The choice is yours. But one of the best choices I believe you can make is to pick a mentor. Like Timothy, you can have more wisdom than what's common. You can make better decisions because you have the experience and wisdom of someone older than you in addition to your own. Just imagine the impact this could have on your life. If you could make great decisions right now, better decisions than I made, and the kind of decisions that will shape your life for the better forever, and the key is as simple as acknowledging 
we all need wisdom from somebody older. We can choose to live through this and try this, find this true and find a mentor. And when you do, God will use just use their wisdom to help your years being young and become better than ever. Being young is amazing. We don't want you to miss out on it. And we don't want you to try and fast forward through it. And I hear this all the time. I, do, I just can't wait until I'm 13. I can't wait until I get the merge. Then it's, I can't wait until I can drive. Then I can't wait until I get out of high school. Then I can't wait to get out of college. Enjoy these years. You want to get the most out of this time? Because one day you won't be young. So don't forget what it feels like. Because there are some things in life for only the young. So when you head into your small groups today, think about your response to this question. What impact could a mentor's wisdom have in your life right now? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for all the teens in this room, Lord. And I just, uh, I hope that they can find good mentors, uh, good mentors that will help them and guide them through this life, Lord. It's not just uh, all on each other and, and the parents, but always looking for somebody who can help them navigate all these things that are, uh, that are in this world and all this noise, Lord. And I just, uh, as a father, I, I, I pray for um, all the children that call New Life home and that they can uh, thrive in your, in your world, Lord. And we just pray this in your name. Amen.